Hello everybody, welcome back to True Crime Loser. How's it going? How's your week going? Good? That's good. Today, wanted to talk about a couple things. I wanted to talk about life in jail versus the death penalty in the Chris Watts case. And also, I wanted, I got this feeling, I was watching last night, I was watching a lot of the crime, the YouTube channel Crime Vault took all of the police body cam footage, which is insane that we even have that to watch. It's just great. And I think the reason that the Colorado Justice Department put everything out is because they crushed it. They absolutely killed, that's probably not the best used word, they did amazing on this case and I think they were proud of it and they said look look how good we did and they gave us all I think that if justice departments for big case I think if they kind of screw up and there's they handled parts that they embarrassed I think that's when they don't release everything but like I've said in other videos the Colorado Justice Department absolutely crushed it and I think they were like look at look at our handiwork so they released everything so I'm watching the body cam and the funny thing, watching that body cam, is Chris didn't have anyone fooled. He didn't have anybody fooled. Shanann's best friend, who deserves a medal of honor for, how, for just not letting Chris even have a couple hours without the cops there. She had Chris pegged. If you watch that body cam footage, the cop's like, is the husband on the way home? And she's like... He said he was, but, you know, she's already given the cop kind of the, <laughs> he said he was, but he's not. And then when he gets there, I think the first moment of behavior that Chris does where you're like, this guy did it, was, you can see, so Shanann's best friend, I'm blanking on her name, I feel bad, um, Anyway, I'm just going to call her Shanann's best friend. So Shanann's best friend and her two kids are there. And they're, they've they been at the place or at their house for a couple hours or an hour. And the cop's been there. And they're just kind of waiting for Chris to get there to be able to get in. And Shanann's best friend at that point already knew it was Chris. Shanann's, or Shanann's best friend's son, that kid, already had him pegged. And so the moment that I think the behavior is extremely suspicious for the first time is Chris finally gets back after, I don't know how long it took him, an hour or two to drive back, and he's just shoved his daughters in the oil tank, buried Shanann in a little grave, and then went and got a breakfast sandwich, and then kind of faked work, uh, just kind of acted like everything was normal at work, and... His coworkers, from the interviews that I listened to, said that he acted basically normal, except that he wasn't wearing the normal clothes that he wears. Usually, the clothes they wear like either flame retardant clothes or they wear like special clothes. And the guy he works with said Chris was wearing. They used to kind of be this certain. The only way you could get that style of clothes is they were kind of baggy and not. And then maybe like a new generation of those clothes came out and they were more form fitting and they looked a little less like work clothes. But Chris was wearing his older set. And so the the guy that Chris works with kind of made a comment like, oh, you really like slumming it today or something. But they said Chris seemed fine other than. Chris went and he pooped in the sunflowers, which I, that could just be a normal thing. He said that they got to use the natural toilet a lot because they just work out in the middle of nowhere. But on that day, you got to think that Chris was just shitting himself. He just, you know, Shanann was only like 15 feet to the, you know, off the where they were working. So... Anywho, so finally Chris gets there, back to their place. They've been calling him. They've been, ha you know, knocking on the window saying, police, you know, Shanann, are you in there? We got to, 
And um, all right, so Chris pulls the truck up, and this is police body cam footage. And Chris walks straight over, and he shakes, you know, we've all seen, he shakes the cop's hand. And then he turns, and Shanann's best friend, the hero, is, is sitting there. And that's your wife's best friend. I'm, th I'm thinking about my girlfriend's best friends, you know, the ones that I see all the time, the ones that I know that, you know, are always there for my girlfriend. And if my girlfriend was missing and I got back to my apartment and there's a cop there and then immediately I'm going to go up and I'm going to hug them and I'm going to say, Molly, what is going on? Have you heard, you know? So Chris shakes the cop's hand and then looks over and just gives Shanann's best friend the death stare through his sunglasses for a second, and then he just turns away. They don't even say a word to each other. And obviously the cop's got a million things going in his mind, but already I feel like that's just like, bro, you didn't, you didn't say anything. But, all right. All right, not going to say anything. Okay, cool. And then Shanann's best friend, the hero, just didn't give Chris an inch during that initial thing. So they're, then they all go in the house, and they're walking around. And, you know, Shanann's friend is going, oh, sh the, the phone's here. The phone is here. And she's, you know, acting the way a normal person acts when someone they love has vanished, and Chris is kind of just like looking at the phone like, huh, all right, yeah, we got a text, and the best friend is like, well, you said they went on a play date, can you look at the cameras to see when they left, Chris, and she has this tone of like, listen, fuck boy, this isn't looking good for you, help us. And Chris is just sitting there going, hmm, okay, I'm going to call the hotels. I think I'm going to call the hostels. Everybody with car seats. And he's just... I watched a YouTube video once where this guy built his own... He built his own sailboat. And he was going to try to sail him and his friend from California, like down to Mexico or something and they just they just didn't know how to build a boat correctly and they didn't they didn't build a good enough boat so within a mere hours of setting sail their boat broke it capsized and they're in the water and i feel like that chris just did not build a good enough lifeboat for himself to enter this situation and same thing within another within a mere couple hours he's in he's just his boat had capsized the sail was gone and he's just in high seas and that's he just looks like he's treading water just trying to stay alive and and then this is where the neighbor comes in and this goes back to i really believe that it takes a community to flush out a psycho like Chris, it really takes, you know, it takes the friend, it takes a best friend, it takes the neighbor to pop his head over and go, hey, I got a doorbell camera that we can look at. And, uh, and then so then Chris goes over and they look at the doorbell camera. And this is where, and there's a great YouTube video that just titles it this. It's like Chris Watts shits his pants because that's the best. If he wouldn't have had to, if he wouldn't have pooped in the sunflowers a couple hours earlier, I think it would have come out just on his neighbor's floor at, right at that moment. Because he's sitting there just going, yeah, okay, yeah, all right, Whew, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. I'm just, and if you. <laughs> He's, he clings on the story that I was loading my water jug and my computer. And if that was a true story, he would just say, yeah, I, was, I just loaded my truck the way I always do. 
but you can tell it's a lie because he's just stuck to like saying the whole thing like when it wouldn't even make sense they're like all right so you're loading your truck he's like yeah i was loading my water jug and my computer and my and they're like all right yeah we just heard you say that and he's like yeah my water jug my computer and they're like no we got that he's like yeah but but my my water jug <sighs> fuck <sighs> shit and I think probably that a lot of the true crime community gets this feeling of watching the interrogations or watching Chris go, <laughs> is it, I'm never going to do anything bad because I don't want to put myself in that position. I don't ever want to feel that. You know? I just, simple as that, like it, I think it makes me a little bit of a better person. Not that I would ever do anything like that, but... To put yourself in that position as an adult, I used to hate being in trouble in school. Just that feeling of, you know, having the authority to be like, sit over here. And just to have that as an adult, I'm the same age as Chris Watts, which is crazy. He looks 10 years older than me with his gray hair and is probably going to turn all white like this year. He had a rough year. But anyway, they go over the neighbor's place, and the neighbor had him absolutely pegged the first day. They watch that, and then Chris is like, all right, yeah, I'm going to go back over. And the cop's like, all right, yeah, you go over. I'm going to get his info. And then the neighbor, the classic thing, is like, he's not acting right. He's swaying around. And then the, the neighbor knew that they had been fighting, which goes against everything that Chris had said in the interrogations about how he doesn't ever fight. And I think even the friends of the of Chris, excuse me of Chris and Shanann had said that too. Like they don't even really fight or they don't ever raise their voices. But the neighbor who lives right by him had said they've been screaming at each other. <coughs> And, uh, which is wild to think about. So anyway, the neighbor had him penned. That's what I think. I think it takes all of those. Because Chris, like I said in the other video, is just a stoic, lying lizard. Just, you know, sitting there going like, I don't know. I don't know where they are. I hope that they come back. I'm just a fucking lizard. And... You know, it takes the cops and it takes the best friend to be like, no, nope, Chris, no, 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 that's not the way it goes. And it takes the neighbor being like, I got this camera over here and it's, I've never seen him pull his, pull his truck in like that. And uh, because who knows, he could, someone with the ability to do what Chris did I think is always at risk for any time the situation is impeding on what he considers his survival, I guess. And I think what he, in this case, he thought that his financial survival, I think he was done with this life and felt like he was being choked out financially, which I think he in turn said, it's just my overall um, survival. And, you know, He's just a stoic lizard. So he he was like, my survival is at risk. And then just... And uh, so I think that he would have at risk. It maybe not have been for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. But who knows? Maybe he gets another family in 20 years and the same thing happens. And he wiggled out of this one. It's I think it's probably happened throughout history. Like It sends chills through my bones to think about way back when it was it was a lot easier to get away with murder just the you know the, there was no cameras and there was no gps on the trucks and everybody lived you know out in the boonies and god knows how many people like this just killed their family and then if anyone asked he could just be like yeah i don't know they got swept away and the we were we, you know we were fishing and they got swept away and yeah, I don't know. And then they get a new family and they do that. It's just chilling. Um, nowadays, you gotta, you gotta, it's gotta be 
really lucky circumstances to not have the forensic evidence and stuff that they need to nail a person like that. But who knows? He could have just done it again. And so, you know, it took, it really did take the community to say, this guy's lying. This guy's full of shit. I have him on my doorbell camera. Like, we need to nail this guy. And, um, and he's gone. He is out of society. Thank God. And so now I'm going to, I'm going to kind of go over. I'm glad that he has life in prison and not the death penalty. I don't, does he deserve the death penalty? Yeah. Yeah, he does. He doesn't deserve anything at this point. But I'm even happy that we have the death penalty. It's like it's an option as a deterrent. I just kind of wish we just wouldn't use it. Like, I like that it just takes forever, you know, because I watched a YouTube video about the people, like some guys in Texas that do the executions, and the way they talk about it and the way they're proud of how many executions that they've done. They almost they almost talk about it like a medal of honor, like the same way like a serial killer in jail. It's like years later and they're doing an interview for the media and they're almost bragging about it. These Texas executioners are sitting there being like, be like, we make it look easy here in Texas. You know, I've done 20 execute, And it's like, you're just, I think you might just be a fucking psycho killer as well. I know you got the government behind you and there's a little piece of paper that says, you know, it's okay for you to do it, but I don't know if there's that much difference. So I don't know. I don't know if we should be the society that actually carries it out. But like I said, I think he, Chris deserves it. I think Chris deserves to be brought out back and just smacked with a hammer and then thrown in the dumpster, you know, but I'm glad that he just got the death penalty. And at the end of the day, um, life in jail is probably more torture for him. Not that I am one of those people that I want him to just be tortured, you know. I, I am a really uh, strong supporter of our justice system. I know it's not perfect, but it took thousands of years for us to get it as good as it, it is. And, um, and yeah, and, and I, I, like I said, it's not perfect, but, um, I'm glad he got life. I think that death penalty is a lot com more comfortable until you're actually executed. It's a lot more comfortable of a stay in prison. I think they get nicer cells and it's quiet and they get treated a little bit better. Cause it's like, yeah, you're right. You're going to die soon. I think the food is better. But just normal prison, you know, it's loud. You always have to. I was watching something where this lady was like people in prison. Oh, yeah, I was watching a a video about how we're getting uh, there's a you know, we threw a lot of people in jail in the 80s and 90s. And now all those pe all those guys are senior citizens. And so it's talking about becoming being old in jail and this lady was saying um that people age a lot more in jail because they're always looking over their backs and it's a really stressful environment and it's like good that's where i think that's where i want chris to be i want it to be loud i want it to be stressful i want him to be worried that someone's gonna just just sneak in you know like a door's unlocked and a prisoner's just gonna run in and just grab him by the neck i want him to be scared um you know scared a little bit not like you know, cruel unusual but he should be a little scared that someone's gonna come in and just wring his neck you know good uh i thought it was cool that the uh, district attorney went and talked to Shanann's family and asked them, you know, you guys want the death penalty? Um, and he went with their wishes. And, I, you know, in my opinion, it's the best case scenario. He's going to sit there probably for 30, 40 years and just think about it. I really wish that no one would send him letters and love letters. It's just, 
He killed his wife and kids. He should have to sit there because your wife and kids, you know, your family is the people that get you through times like that, through the hardest times. They're your support. They're the, you know, and he killed them. And so I don't feel like that he should have, you know, I feel like he should have, feel like he's just rotting away and in, in jail and that he doesn't have that love coming in. But God knows, you know, women and men alike are going to send him letters. And I think that could really get him through his day. It's just, hey, Chris, I love you. You're so hot. Like, here's a picture of my butt. You know, it's they should take his mail away. But I don't know. I'd love to know if what books he gets, what books he's reading. Um, I'd love to know what he does on his breaks. You know, I, I'd love to know kind of all that. So hopefully something like that, the info, comes out soon. Anyway, this one's getting long. But um, I really appreciate everybody that subscribes. The old True Crime Loser had a pretty good uh, night last night. I think YouTube must have thrown my video into like the highly recommends or something but cheers to everybody that's new i had like 30 subscribers yesterday so cheers to all the new people i really cheers boop i really appreciate it i really appreciate the support um hope you had a good week i'll probably talk to you later this afternoon or tomorrow true crime loser out